Hi and welcome to this vMix 18 overview video. In this video I'm going to be showing you some of the new features in vMix 18. The first feature is activators. Activators allows you to control the LED lights on supported MIDI controllers and X keys controllers. So for example we have an Akai APC uh, MIDI controller right here that has a number of buttons on it. And those buttons support a number of colors that can be assigned to each of those buttons. So to set that up in vMix is simple. So this is a desktop capture of my production in vMix. To set up activators, first I'm going to go to settings. And then I'm going to go to shortcuts. And from MIDI settings, I'm going to make sure I enable the controller, in this case the APC40 Mark II. Now this uh, is where you control what happens when you press a button on the controller. So to do that I click add and I click find and I'm going to choose a button on the control surface. I'm just going to hold it down so that when I press the button down I want it to cut to my camera. So I select cut as the function and I'm going to select my camera, Martin Camera 1 and then click OK. So we add the shortcuts. Now that's been available uh, for a number of releases now but that's the first step. You want to program what you want the buttons to do first before setting up the activators. So if I press the button, it will cut to live. And then we're back to the desktop capture here. So you can see here, I've just assigned it to the very first button there. And I press it, and it goes live right there. But now I want the button to light up a certain color when that happens, and that's where activators come in. So now I can go to settings, and I can go to activators, and I can click Enable Devices, and I'm going to enable the APC40 Mark II in here as well. And then click Add. And it's the same sort of process as shortcuts. Uh, we click Find, and we hold down the button. There is the button, and I click OK. Now we select an event, and events are various things that happen. They turn on or they turn off, or they change in vMix that you want to assign to the button. So I want to select Input. Input means whenever the input is in the output. And I want to select the, the camera in question, number one. And now I can choose whether to assign that activator to a particular number or not. So if I assign this activator to input number one, if I move the inputs around, whatever number one is going to activate that particular button. So because I set up the shortcut to go to a particular input, regardless of where it is, I'll untick. Now the type is the type of button. So we've got an Akai APC40 Mark II, so we can select the preset here. If your particular MIDI controller doesn't appear in this list, you can try button LED, which is sort of a generic one to turn on or off lights, and it might work for you. Uh, but otherwise you can select one of the options here, X keys, New Mark, Behringer, and Akai. So we choose Akai APC Mark II LED. And from the final drop-down box, I can select a color. Now, many MIDI controllers just have on or off colors, but some, like the Akai, have a whole lot of different colors to choose from. So let's choose, let's choose this color here. Uh, actually, we'll choose red. Red's a good color to have. So I've chosen red when the... Uh, when the Martin Camera 1 is in the output, I turn on the red LED. Now, what we want to set up as well is defaults. What color do we want the button to be when it's not in the output, i.e. the default button? Now, if you're in a dark production environment, you may want all the buttons to light up so you can easily see them, and that's easy to do as well. I can click Find and find the button, and I can see it's number 32. And I can also choose a range of buttons. So I can click find and find out what the last one is. Well, the last one is note zero. So I want to go from zero to 32. So I've chosen all notes from zero to 32. Now the event that I want to choose for them is default. And now I can select what happens when nothing, no event is active. It's not in the output or it's not, the audio is not turned on. Whatever you've programmed the activator to do, when it's off, it'll choose default. And we can select from here the Akai Mark II LED. And now, I, as you know, before I had it as red when it's live. But let's just make it white uh, by default. 
so I can click OK. Now as soon as I added that default, you can see here that the controls have all lit up white, like so. And I've got a couple missing from the top, so I need to, I think the number order on the Akai is in reverse. All I have to do is go to the default and click edit and make sure that I have that set to the last one. So I can look here and refer, oh it's number 39. So from 0 to, to 39 I want to be white by default. And now after I've done that you can see all the LEDs in the control. If you look over here to the left are all white because they're all on default. So that's how you assign default colors. And for X keys you know you could assign the X keys control to be all blue or all red when nothing else is happening. So I've got two here. I've got the default, which is white, and I've got red, which is what happens when the camera goes live. So let's see what happens now when I press the button. So you can see I've got all the buttons along here, and I can see what happens when I press this one right here. This will light up red as soon as I press it. And there you go. It's lighting up red which looks a little bit orange on this control service, but that's red. Now if I switch back to the desktop capture, it'll go back to the default, which is white. So that is how you can program the lights in activators to turn on or off lights in different colors. Uh, you can also do the same thing for motorized control surfaces as well. So you can go to activators and you can click add and you can choose a, a fader. If it's a motorized fader, uh, such as some Behringer models, uh, the X-Touch series for example, if it's motorized then you can choose that fader like so and you can assign the event to input volume and I can assign it to the Martin Camera 1 volume. So whenever I, uh, I it chooses the type of course, fader. Or I can choose you know things like encoder rings, um, and, and things like that. So let's assign the input volume on the Akai. Since I don't have motorized faders on this particular model, I can in, in assign it to an encoder ring, such as this one up here. So first of all, I'll click Find, and I'll turn that knob. Right, so, so that locates that input volume, and I can assign this, instead of the input, Let's choose master volume, so our master volume for our production here. Um, or maybe instead of master, you could choose the input volume of the microphone. So I have my microphone set up right there. But we'll choose the master volume for this demonstration. So I can choose uh, Akai, um, I can choose a fader. Um, I guess we can choose for that. So that's the generic volume fader assigned to that particular particular control. So now if you look at the controller, you can see as soon as I added that, the volume level here, the little uh, LED, orange LED is at the end, um, which represents that the volume is on full. So now if I go to the audio mixer and I drag this fader, now you're not going to hear my volume, so I'm going to just demonstrate <laughs> Dragging the fader down and you'll see what happens on the controller. Alright, so I'm going to cut to live and show you that in, uh, in close up what happens. So I'm just moving the fader. Like that. So there's a number of ways you can use activators in vMix 18. So that is the first new feature in, in vMix 18, is activators. Click to watch another exciting vMix tutorial.